So last video I showed you a tutorial on how to get the developer level editor up and running and uh, you know saving levels and whatnot. You know just the basics. Here I'm going to show you just some uh, oddities and some uh, extra sort of tips and tricks with it. So I've included in the description some pre-made uh, templates for each of the types of level with the correct backgrounds and the uh, walls. At least I think the correct backgrounds, but maybe uh, you're too lazy to include walls. Maybe you just want to get rid of them. Can you do that? Oh, it seems like you can. See, you can go left and you can also go to the right and uh, not uh, worry about uh, anything. So it gives you some more space to you, you know you use with your level, so that's actually pretty cool. Unfortunately, there is a limit to this. As you can see, an enemy can go to the left, and it can also go to the right, fine. But if it goes up or down, it will actually crash, which I will demonstrate. Just put a few of these here. It makes no difference which uh, type we use, it's only aesthetics. Yep. Now if it wanders down the bottom of the screen, yeah, it goes underneath the level thing, but if you give it a second, yep, it eventually uh, hits a boundary. And uh, unfortunately there's not a lot you can do to prevent it, like with this AI. Uh, it, it, I've had enemies uh, wander down there just by themselves. It's because the AI of the enemies, they will go down any free uh, corridor that they can. If they hit an intersection, they'll randomly choose which direction they'll go in. So there's a lot there, there's a lot of chances for them to wander off uh, unless it's an anglerfish or a dogfish. Another limitation that we have is that there does seem to be a limit on how many objects you can have on, in one level. Because as you can see, we have a lot of kelpsies here, but if we start the level, yeah, it only gives us the first 40 of them. So if you've used the level editor, uh, the normal one, You'll note that the whirlpools that they use here aren't quite the same as the ones that they use in the actual legit game. These ones will take you, uh, as you can see, to a, a random portal. Here they obviously work differently. You have one, two, three, four, five different types of uh, whirlpools. They each will go uh, between two specific whirlpools. If you use uh, more than uh, one, more than two of the same type. It orders them bottom to top, right to left. So basically the opposite order that you read stuff in. And it prioritizing the bottom to top over uh, right to left. As you can see, it will use the last two ones in that order. And any further ones will uh, just take you to those. So you can create like a one way uh, exit in your levels using this if you uh, are so inclined. Also, we have some, uh, this bottom right thing here, remember, changes the backgrounds. We have some unused ones. Let's cycle through some of them. This is, uh, a weird unused, like, green thing. Yeah, this is a weird one. This is, like, the, uh, kind of tree background, you know, from levels, uh, 15 to 20 or 16 to 20, except red. So something interesting you can do with the bonus caves here. As you can see, we have four uh, kelp seeds. We also have a bonus room. And what's this? I put a kelp seed in the bonus room. Yeah, uh, it, even though the main game doesn't actually uh, have any instances of this, you can do that and uh, it's functional. It'll keep me here for another 60 seconds, I think, 60 seconds at least. And yeah. Um, you'll also find that the reverse also works. Um, you can uh, do this first. And then it counts levels done, so yeah. Also another a uh, bit of a uh, oddity. Um, it still uh, counts that as, uh, it starts the level having counted uh, with the bonus door open, and now it won't give me the scepter again. I'm gonna guess this is because, you know, in, in the actual, you know, legit game, you can't start out in the same room that you have, you know, the bonus room in. 
Or maybe it's because you can't complete the bonus room so quickly, but I don't know. So one extra thing I want to show off is the, uh, I want to race the enemies and kind of see how their speeds compare to each other because I've always assumed that the, never mind, I have to clearly add some bubbles there because I've always believed that the enemies had uh, only two speeds each. So yeah, it looks like they're traveling at the same speed, but then uh, thankfully we're a lot faster. Um, the crab's lagging kind of behind there. So it's actually slightly slower. Um, obviously the puffer fish is quite a bit slower. Let's see what happens if we, uh, if we remove that puffer fish for the dog fish. I don't know why I was moving back and forth myself there. I'm clearly a lot faster than these guys. Good thing too, since the, uh, you know, as if the later levels don't get hard enough. So as you can see, it's actually the when the crab goes to the left, his speed is the same as the other uh, three. But when he goes, it's when he goes to the right that it starts to, you know, kind of desync a little. So yeah, interesting. They they gave him his own speeds. Now we're gonna look at their vertical speeds. Ugh, again. So yeah, when it's again with the crab, when it goes up, it's uh, desyncing. Like it, it travels at the same speed as the as the pufferfish down, but up it's like half that. Yeah, look at that. Uh, they they both hit the top, the walls at the same time. And the squid is also not quite the same speed vertically as the uh, the shark is. And now let's make one final test. This time we'll race the pufferfish and the squid horizontally. Alright, they look about the same. This is slightly hard to tell because the squid has a, you know, its sprite looks a little bit bigger. Yeah, they're exactly the same. Okay, so it's the crab, only the crab who's a little bit weird. 